<laughs> okay, I'm, I'm, I'm recording now. Anyway, so, uh, oh. hi. <laughs> hey. <laughs> Am I screen sharing? I've got my, uh, my, my market. Yep. Okay, good. All right, good. So this is the, the, the chart that I go through every month. Uh, they actually update it on a weekly basis, hence the name weekly snapshot. <laughs> but they do that Monday evening. So because we do our call Monday at noon, it, um, it, it updates later in the day. But um, it, you know, I think um, it gives us pertinent enough information, I think. So uh, let me make this um, bigger. And so you can see it a little bit better, but this is single family um, homes that have actually sold and closed and the green bars are, are uh, the previous year, 2020, and the, and the blue bars are current, 2021. 20, uh, Although these actually go back, um, well, Anyway, never mind. So, <laughs> um, so what's interesting is that the number of, of closings have actually, you can see, are, are up from 2021 over 2020. Um, this is about when we locked down last year. Of course, these are closed, um, sold and closed. The next bar graph is properties that have actually gone under contract. Oh, oh boy. I know, right? It's pretty, pretty amazing. So this is, you can see last year, the green bars, this is when we locked down, but um, we had started out, we came out of the box in January, 2020. It was a very nice spring market starting to build and then boom, we locked down and it just declined. Right. <clears throat> what's been happening this year look how far ahead we are this year over last year it's pretty pretty stunning um and then this next shows the new listings and um listings are up again this is when we locked down last year um of course listings declined listings are up um and these are the Is there no inventory what's going on there yeah that's they're... strange there's not there's not a lot of inventory and then these are the showings and the showings there's nothing there's no real news here you can see last year when we locked down of course there were no showings but right now we're right we came back we're pretty much on trend and, and i think we're pretty much on trend again for this year so there's no real news here i don't think um this is an interesting chart because it shows uh, how prices have have appreciated and i'll go into the info sparks and give give a little bit more detail but the the um the the orange line is last year and the gold line is this year and you can see that we are consistently above uh sale price uh, the sale price is consistently mm -hmm. above what it's been Okay, let me go over to the info sparks. I was looking at this earlier today. And this is for all of Chicagoland. Um, and I did um, pick out just single family, um, um, not new construction resales. This is sale median sales price. And this goes back all the way when they started keeping the data in 2008. So this mm -hmm. is a pretty big um, picture. But uh, you can see here, um, this is December of 19, February, March of 20, and that's 245. Now we're up to 270. So that's a $25,000. That's a 10% increase in, in purchase price. And look how it's boom. <laughs> I mean, we kind mm -hmm. of off here during the lockdown, but as soon as we opened up, started opening up again, the prices have just been increasing. and. The same thing with uh, um, how much inventory we have. I mean, you can see that the inventory has been steadily declining. Um, the, this is actual numbers of homes for sale. And again, it's, it's, a, it's a pretty dramatic decrease in the number of, so that's, that's what's driving prices up, of course. That and probably what you want to talk about, <laughs> which is the interest rates and what's going on with, with the mortgage. So. Yeah, so it's, you know, pretty, pretty, pretty consistent to what we were talking about last month. They're still trending upwards, but we did have a rebound for about a solid two weeks. Um, there's a period of time when things started to level out, even, even go back down just a tick, but they're still trending, you know, upward and, 
you know, everything that I'm reading is that they're just going to keep doing that as things start to open back up and things start to get back to quote unquote normal. Um, they're predicted to continue to rise, but you know, in the grand scheme of things, they are still incredibly low. Um, you know, so the, the gains well, that we've like had over the last year aren't completely gone. Yeah. I mean, they're still, um, um, they're still running around three, three and a quarter, right? The interest rates. Yeah, I mean, depending on what you're doing, you're still in the twos, you know, which is, which is great. I mean, you know, single family buyers are definitely in the twos. Um, condo buyers, depending on what they're putting down, they can get down there too, but you know, things are, things are ticking up. So there are some three and an eighths, three and a quarters that are out there. And, you know, hopefully those that are, you know, said the same thing last month, hopefully those that are able are out there looking. I mean, again, you know, you can speak to this, no inventory, <laughs> but, um, right. you know, people are trying and like you're saying, you know, things are going for above asking um, a lot, multiple offers, mm -hmm. which, you know, this, is definitely something buyers want to keep in mind when they're getting into multiple offers or they're offering over asking mm -hmm. is that the property still has to appraise. Um, right. You know, it has to appraise because the bank only lends you money based on the lower of either the appraised value or the sales price. So, you know, if you're offering and your offer gets accepted, it's $10,000 over asking, but the appraisal only comes back at asking that 10,000 has to be made up somewhere, whether the seller drops the price, or the buyer brings up, you know, the difference or they meet in the middle, but right. that's how that works. So that's kind of the situation that a lot of people are running into right now, mm -hmm. um, you know, with, with, with these properties going for, you know, well over asking some people are even signing um, appraisal contingency waivers to whereas they, you know, they sell, say up front, you know, if it doesn't appraise, the buyer is responsible for the difference and people are okay with that. Yeah. I know there, there's a real um, there's a real feeding frenzy out there, and um, um, and it, I was actually talking to somebody uh, yesterday that they're moving to D.C. and they finally got a place after the you know, it was the third place that they had made an offer on, and and they had mm -hmm. finally gotten a place. I'm like, well, it's no different in Chicago than it is in D.C. It's exactly that's pretty typical. Of, of what's happening, um, that buyers are having to, you know, I mean, I, I think it, the first time they, they go out, they don't realize what they're up against and then mm -hmm. they get beat up a little bit. But uh, something that I wanted to go into a little bit today is, is FOMO and that, and that's what <laughs> is what we're experiencing in the market fear of missing out. And it's really having an impact on how we're bringing properties to the market. Um, I've never actually seen this kind of, um, uh, of a situation before where the market has been, there's been such a, a lack of inventory that what, what and, and, and things have changed somewhat with the, in our MLS and how that's done, but there's a platform that's called Coming Soon that we now have available to us in the MLS. And it was, it was started a couple of years ago uh, maybe five years ago now, time has a way of getting by me, but um, <laughs> it was probably about five years ago that, that our MLS actually introduced this coming soon uh, platform. And the intent of it was while you're getting, because, uh, while you're getting your property ready to come to market with the staging and the photographs and all the things that have to happen to, to bring a property to market, um, while while you're in that process, you may be able to find a buyer. So you put it on the coming soon platform with the intent that maybe um, while you're in the staging process, you can you can actually get the property sold. You uh, sell yeah. it has nothing to lose and everything to gain by doing that. Um, but what's happening now because of the lack of inventory, agents are putting things on there. It's, it's actually kind of a marketing strategy where a, a, a buyer's agents are, are desperately combing, looking for inventory for their buyers. Um, and of course are checking the coming soon platform uh, religiously. And now it's become almost a pricing strategy. You had mentioned about the appraisal and the property mm -hmm. having to appraise out. It's really difficult to know in this environment how to, how to 
uh, price a property properly without leaving a ton of money on the on the table. Because if you look at the comps, the comps are history. The comps are what sold um, what things were selling for in December or January. The things that are closing now probably went under contract about 60 days ago. So this is the end of April. They would have gone under contract the end of February. Um, which, you know, it's, it's a pretty dynamic market. So what, what happened the end of February is probably a little different than what's happening right now today. Um, right. So a seller doesn't want to leave money on the table, but buyers are still sensitive about overpaying. So one of the advantages of this coming soon platform is you can, you can test market it um, Put it out there. If you let's say I, 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 for instance, I had a seller that wanted to um, put their property on the market at 650, and I thought we should probably list it at 600. So we could put it on the P, the the coming soon platform at 650. See what kind of bites we get. If if nobody bites, then we can come back and and put it on at a at, you know at a lower price. But on the other hand, if it, if it's gone, then we know that you know. So so it's a tough market to know how to appropriately price something. And we're using this Compass platform. This I'm sorry, this coming soon platform as a way to kind of test the pricing right now and see what happens mm -hmm. but um yeah there's a real i call it the fomo marketing strategy because <laughs> <laughs> like buyers, buyers are definitely and by the time you know and, and and part of the dynamic of what's happening here is by the time something hits the mls so so here's what agents are doing they're doing this coming soon kind of test marketing it the pricing and then um, they put it on the in the official MLS the official marketing starts maybe Thursday afternoon Friday morning they plan open houses on Saturday and Sunday saying offers are due by the end of the day on Sunday or perhaps 9 a.m. Monday morning we're going to review offers mm -hmm. with the expectation that there'll be multiple offers and that we're going to accept one by the by the end of the day on Monday the property will be gone sold um, yeah. so yeah, it's, it's, it's very stressful. It's a, it's a stressful on both sides, both on the selling side and on the buying side. But of course it's, um, a better kind of stress, I think for the sellers than it is for the buyers. <laughs> yeah, definitely. <laughs> And of course, course having fun right now. you know, so sellers are starting to get the message that that, the, that it's definitely a seller's market, and um, uh, they're starting to get crazy, get get a little bit crazy about their pricing. But it's hard to know how to advise sure. a seller in this in this environment. So, yeah, it's tough. You know, we'll yeah. see what happens. Maybe people will be a little bit more comfortable listing their place, and and we'll get some more inventory soon. What do you What well, do you think there? Lately, I mean. I, Lately, I've been talking to most people that I've been talking to and meeting with have, have gotten both their vaccinations. And so the vaccination thing mm -hmm. is definitely um, helping, no question. I think people are less fearful. We were out actually for dinner Saturday night uh, and it seemed like uh, the only people in the restaurant wearing masks were the servers and, and the staff, none, mm. of the, <laughs> none of the, none of the, uh, customers were, I mean, you know, they wore their masks coming to and from the table, but once they sat down, they didn't right. have their masks on. And uh, it's felt very, um, it felt very um, um, normal. Yeah, starting to feel pretty normal, actually. And that's the other thing yeah. is that the restaurants are allowed to have 50% capacity now. So, um, oh, okay, that's good. So it was actually a little bit noisy. We weren't the only people there. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, hopefully, hopefully that translates to all those people selling their houses too. Yeah, yeah. Do you have any topics you want to cover this month, Ter Terrence? Any, any? Uh, anything? Actually, that was that was my main one was appraisals because it was fresh in my mind. Um, you know, seeing all these places go over asking, you know, making sure that buyers are aware of the responsibility, the potential responsibility that they have if that happens. You know, banks don't just willy-nilly just hand out money. They, there's there's a control there. Yep. And, you know, to your point, you know, appraisals are based on comps and history. Mm -hmm. So, yes, things can appreciate and prices can start to, start to go up, but they're not going to just jump that much overnight. Right. You know, the appraiser's job is to justify that value. 
and you know they don't they don't work for for the bank they don't work for anybody they're independent contractors their job is just to get a true value of that property so if it comes back low that's something that you know we'll have to do and have to adjust adjust for but you know that's just one of the main things that buyers need to be aware of in these in these circumstances well you know and and i'm glad you're bringing that up as a point well we had this conversation last month about cash buyers versus buyers that need to be that need to get financing and and because uh, i i was was working last month with a couple of cash buyers and in getting very frustrated actually because it didn't seem like the listing agent fully appreciated the fact that they didn't have to go through this process of of having the property appraised which um it it, it you know uh, yeah <laughs> so yeah it's it's um unless the buyer has got a huge down payment and you know like they're putting 50 percent down and the appraisal comes back like you said ten thousand shy and they can make up the difference and instead of getting i don't know that there's a lot of percentage an improvement in 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 terms if they put um 25 down or 50 percent down is there well once you it depends on the product but once you cross over 30 that's about it i mean that's, things can improve that's... a little bit but it depends, it depends on it depends on the buyer credit um the, the products and the type of property but generally you know especially with condo adjustments will fall off at 25 percent down pricing will you know improve a little bit at 30 but it really comes down to the uh specific situation but yeah once you get to a certain point yeah well cash is still no. king right <laughs> so a buyer, a buyer a buyer, a buyer my <laughs> will. <laughs> definitely i mean a buyer with with either a cash buyer or a buyer with 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 a lot of money down to me trumps a, a 95 percent loan to value uh more loan any day but um anyway and see you know i don't <laughs> understand why i you know what money is money <laughs> exactly <laughs> so, all right well i don't think i have anything more i want to add to the to the mix here but um i hope hope you all found found the information useful if you have any questions feel free to reach out to terrence or myself uh we're always happy to Please. take calls um if, or drop a question in the chat we'll uh, uh get back to you and um, um definitely um if, Definitely a good idea to get talk to Terrence before you get serious about your buying. Um, oh, yeah. You begin your buying process and um, always here to help you out. So have a good awesome. week, have a good month, and we'll see you all next month. Bye for now. Thanks, Mary. Bye.